Hello, my name is Martha Stevens. I am an equine vet over in Gloucestershire um, for a company called B&W Equine Vet. And today I'm going to talk to you about weight management in the horse, um, why it's important and things that we can do to try and help horses remain at their optimum weight. So first of all, why is weight management important? Increasingly, obesity is a massive problem um, in the horses and ponies of the um, of the United Kingdom. Um, donkeys as well suffer massively with obesity, so it's something that we see across all equids. Um, some studies have estimated that up to 85% of the pleasure horse population um, is overweight, and I think that's probably something that I would agree with um, in the horses that I see on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, Obesity has a massive negative impact on horses' health. Um, it can cause unnecessary strain on joints, um, it can cause respiratory issues, um, and it also definitely predisposes horses to getting laminitis. Um, similarly to people, being overweight can definitely lead to serious long-term health issues. Um, so if you've got an older horse in particular that has already got arthritis, then having to carry around extra weight really, really doesn't help their situation. Um, by accurately measuring a horse's weight, we can um, make sure that horses are given the appropriate dose of wormers as well, um, and well, wormers and any other drugs that your vet may be prescribing, um, and it minimises the risk of re resistance to wormers developing from underdosing. People often ask us as vets, what is the ideal weight for my horse? Um, I think it's important to remember that this is something that is going to be individual to your specific horse. Um, there's no correct answer for a 14-2 horse or a 15-2 horse. You know, every single horse is going to have a different ideal weight, um, just like people do. Um, but this ideal weight will depend on a number of factors. So first of all, their breed type. Um, so heavier horses will inevitably be heavier. Um, their, their height. So again, you wouldn't expect a Shetland to weigh anything like a, uh, a thoroughbred. Um, their current level of work is really important as well, and their expected level of work, um, and any health issues that they may have, um, because this can definitely have an impact on um, the exercise you can do with them, what their turnout situation is, all that sort of thing. Uh, the best thing to do to know what weight you want to aim for with your horse is to have a conversation with your vet, um, and they can give you advice on a sensible target weight, um, depending partly on the criteria above um, and partly on um, sort of expected normals for various different horse types. Um, it's important to regularly monitor the, or your horse's weight um, and also it's her, that his or her body condition score. Um, this is something we'll talk about in a little bit more detail um, in a couple of slides time, um, but that can really help to identify increasing or decreasing weight trends um, and allow you to intervene and hopefully make a difference before your horse becomes unhealthily overweight or underweight. There are a number of weight management tools available to us as vets and also to you as um, horse owners. Um, one of the most simple is a weigh tape. These are really easy to get your hands on um, and also very easy to use. They're not 100% accurate, but I find them a really useful tool for an owner to um, basically provide ongoing measurement of, of weight gains or weight losses. Um, so although I wouldn't 100% trust that the weight that you get on a weight tape is going to be the exact weight of your horse, um, it is relatively close and it also just allows you to see when you're using it for ongoing monitoring whether your horse is going up in weight or down in weight. So it's useful for trends, um, particularly if you get used to using it and you make sure that you always use it in the same position. Um, so it's really useful to, to get familiar with how to use a weight tape and then make sure that you continuously use it in the same format. Um, and this is something that we often use in conjunction with body condition scoring, which we'll go on to in a minute. Um, and there's a photo of someone popping a, a weight tape around a horse here. Um, and again, if you're not totally sure where you want to put it, then by all means, you can have a chat with one of your local vets um, and they can give you advice on the, the best way to use a weight tape. Body condition scoring is a method that's been developed to allow us and you to 
score your horse um, as to whether they are the correct weight or whether they're underweight or whether they're overweight. Um, it aims to measure the amount of stored fat on the horse's body um, and we often use it in conjunction with, um, with weigh tapes um, to give a good indication of whether a horse is a good size, overweight or underweight. Um, naturally, horses will are designed to lose weight over the winter months so that they can safely gain weight in the summer once the spring flush of grass comes through. Um, so actually, although it's we obviously don't want horses to lose a huge amount of weight over winter, it's, it's quite a normal and healthy thing for horses to fluctuate um, between ideally what we'd call number two, which is a moderate weight, and number three, which is a good weight throughout the year. Um, it's exactly how they've evolved evolved to survive um, and horses that can maintain a, a good to fat body weight throughout the year are significantly higher risk for things like equine metabolic syndrome which can then lead to the laminitis and, and increased fat gain um, so the example on this slide um, is a traffic light system going from naught to five whereby naught is considered far too thin, it's an emaciated horse, and obviously none of us want that, um, through to poor, moderate and good. Um, we, as an ideal, we often want to aim for moderate to good in most horses, um, and then going through to fat and then obese. Um, and there's a bit more information on this slide as to the um, ins and outs of those particular um a particular areas but again if you want more information on this please contact your vets and they should be able to provide you with um, some handouts about uh, body condition scoring. To work out the most accurate weight of your horse that you can um, then one of the best options is using a weigh bridge. Um, some vet practices will have um, weigh bridges at their clinic that you can go to you may be able to um, go and use so it's worth having that conversation um, but there's also some companies that will have access to a portable weigh bridge um, whether this is your vets or a nutrition company um, these are really really helpful for at least once a year um, just to get an idea of how heavy exactly your horse is um, and then to use sort of going forwards then use the weigh tape as a kind of ongoing constant monitoring um, so if that's something you're interested in, definitely speak to your local practice. Another useful tool is um, measuring the horse's crest, um, particularly for horses that tend to be quite cresty. Um, this is very, very useful for, for judging how at risk they are from their, from their weight at that time. So what you want to do is find the midpoint of your horse's neck, which is halfway along the crest from the top to the bottom of the mane, um, and with your horse holding his head at a normal height, measure around the circumference of the neck at the midpoint um, using a measuring tape um, or using a weight tape. Um, and you keep a record of this measurement along with your weight measurements um, to, to see how things are going, whether things are getting better or worse. Um, there's a number of reasons why crest measurement specifically is useful. Um, it firstly acts as a, a use, another um, measure of weight loss. Um, so if the crest is reducing, then your horse is losing fat. Um, but the other reason why it's so important is that just like humans, not all horse fat is equal. Um, in humans, the fat that's around the waist is associated with an increased risk of cardiovascular disease and type 2 diabetes. Um, and in horses and ponies, the fat tissue that's deposited in the crest is associated with a significantly increased risk of laminitis. So by reducing the size of your horse or pony's crest, um, you are reducing the risk of him or her developing this fairly unpleasant disease. Um, and I think anyone that's had laminitic ponies before would know, would agree that it's something that we want to avoid where possible um, at all costs. So if you have a fat horse or pony and we need to get a bit of weight off them, um, what do you need to do? First of all, get some measurements um, before you start so that you can monitor your horse's progress. Um, it also can be quite helpful to take a photo and um, try and do it in um, a situation that's repeatable so that you can take a, a progress photo later on in the same position. Um, speak to your vet about what target weight you're aiming for for your horse. Um, and then remember that what we really want to achieve with horses is a nice steady weight loss. So at no point do we want them to be sort of crash dieting um, or yo-yo dieting. 
um, because that's just as bad for horses as it is for people. Um, but instead, we want to put a management plan in place that allows them to slowly but surely reduce their body fat. Um, so from a feeding point of view, 1.5% um, of their body weight per day um, is a really good starting point. Um, so this 1.5% of their body weight includes their grass, their hay, their chaff and any other feeds that they're getting. Um, during the weight loss period, you can use a combination of hay and low calorie chaff um, to make up the bulk of your horse's diet. Um, one thing that I always remind people is that, particularly if we've got a horse that's not going out on grass at the moment, or that's not getting particularly calorific feeds, um, but it is still really important to give a vitamin and mineral supplement or a feed balancer um, to make sure that they have all the trace elements that they need. And you can get some really good low calorie feed balancers that will allow you to um, make sure they have what they need in their body, um, but without overfeeding them on anything. So we'll take the example of a pony weighing 300 kilos um, that we are um, aiming to, to lose some weight from. Um, and so 300 times 1.5 would work out as 4.5 kilos of feed per day. Um, so this might be made up of a variety of things. Um, so for example, a morning feed of chaff and a bit of feed balancer, 0.25 kilos. Um, a morning hay net, which can equal 1.5 kilos lunchtime hay net of a kilo, evening feed of chaff and feed balancer of 0.25 kilos, and then an evening hay net seen through the night of 1.5 kilos. Um, we would always make sure to advise that um, these ponies, particularly if they're on box rest, should have access to a salt lick um, and obviously fresh access to water at all times. Um, so that's just a rough example of uh, the sort of things that you can divide the feeds up into. We advise using a spring scale to weigh out your hay nets um, and make sure that you weigh them before you're soaking them. If you are going to soak them, the spring scale attaches onto the hay net. You can lift it up with the, scale, with the spring um, and it tells you how much you've got in the net. We also advise using the same for weighing out bucket feeds. So if you know what the bucket weighs um, you, and then put in the feed, you can work out how much you've got in there using a, um, the spring scale. Um, particularly for horses that you're trying to actively lose weight from, especially laminitics, um, we advise that all hay is soaked for at least four hours. Um, and it's really important to remember that this should be in clean water, um, because if you keep soaking in the same water, you're essentially soaking that hay in sugar. Um, so, yeah, it's good to, to empty the um, water butt or whatever you're using to soak the hay in um, relatively frequently. Grazing time should be limited as much as possible. Um, now, this would depend on the reason for your horse's weight loss. Um, so whether you're, if, as I say, if you have a laminitic pony, then actually grazing should be completely stopped. Um, if you have a horse that you're just trying to lose some weight from, then we advise that grazing should be slightly limited. So this can be done by turning out on a completely bare paddock um, or fitting a grazing muzzle. Um, but it's important to work out what works for you and for your horse. Um, and again, this is something that you can definitely have a sensible conversation with your local vet about um, as to what the best options might be for you. Um, if you are using a grazing muzzle, make sure that the horse or pony is comfortable wearing them and most relevantly that they're able to drink normally um, whilst they're wearing it um, to avoid any, any problems developing. So next up, we'll talk about exercise. Um, so this is obviously a very important part of any weight loss plan, um, but it's very important to make sure that the exercise plan that you have in place is um, appropriate for your horse's age, its activity levels, um, and particularly any pre-existing conditions it may have. So if you've got a pony that's actively suffering from laminitis or any other reason that they can't be exercised, again, this is something that you should have a conversation with your vet about. Um, but the exercise plan doesn't have to just be ridden exercise. Um, this can include lunging, um, long reining, loose schooling, or actually just in hand walking if you have a sensible enough horse. When putting together an exercise plan, um, you want to try and get your horse actively working um, for at least 20 minutes per session. It's also really important if you have a fairly unfit horse that you don't just go straight from 0 to 60. Um, you can have you, a horse can actually exercise relatively well um, in trot, they don't actually have to be cantering all the time. And things like asking your horse to collect itself um, and doing pole work, that sort of thing, 
all add in different elements of exercise. So it's something that we can give advice for um, or discuss with your instructor, um, you know, how best to increase your horse's fitness. If your horse or pony starts off at a fairly unfit point, then I would aim for three sessions per week um, to get them going and then aim to build up to at least five sessions per week. Um, other things that can be really helpful for this um, is if you live in a hilly area, just even when you're out on a hack, making your horse actively walk up a, up a big hill rather than just letting them go at their own pace, um, all really help to build muscle and fitness. Um, but as I said previously, if you're at all concerned that your horse might not be able to put up with a certain level of exercise, or even if you just want to discuss what level of exercise your horse um, could cope with, um, then by all means consult your vet first, um, and this is something that we're very able to advise you on. Once you have worked out your horse's um, weight loss plan and their regime, um, then it's really, really good to have um, a good monitoring tool. Um, so using your weigh tape, it's important to um, weigh and assess your horse's body condition score uh, roughly every two weeks. Um, that allows you to see progress um, without letting time run away with you. Um, and again, your vet can definitely help you to estimate your horse's target, target weight. Um, but as a rough guide, you want to be aiming for a body condition score of either good or moderate, um, depending on the system used. Um, this would be a really good indication that your horse is where you want where, where you're aiming for. Um, so having some kind of a weight chart um, is really helpful. Um, so you can sort of see increasing and decreasing trends. Um, and always, you know, the, your vet is always there to discuss these things for you. And um, we can give advice on long term weight management as well. Um, because once your horse has actually reached their target weight, you'll probably want to slightly increase their feed again. Um, without if without going mad so this is again something that we can um, give you some advice on so let's finish with talking about our top tips for equine weight loss first of all by soaking your horse's hay in fresh water for at least four hours we significantly reduce the calorie content and sugar content of the hay this is really really helpful and a very simple thing that we can do to aid weight loss Secondly, by dividing the daily hay ration into as many separate meals as possible, we help to alleviate the horse's boredom and also make sure that their natural instinct to continue to graze continuously throughout the day is met. If your horse or pony is turned out onto a yard or a bare paddock in the day, then hanging two hay nets up at different ends of the yard or paddock can help to mimic the horse's natural grazing patterns and encourage them to move around. Even if they're on box rest, by hanging separate small hay nets in different places in the box, we encourage some movement and encourage them to make the hay last slightly longer. By double netting the horse's hay net, we can also slow down the rate at which they eat uh, by simply making the holes smaller. There are also commercially available hay nets that have really small holes and um, which just make them take longer to eat. So um, slowing down the horses horses hay intake and hanging a net of hay from the ceiling in the middle of the stable can be really beneficial as well. You need obviously to have a, a sensible place to be able to hang the hay from but if it's an option by doing this you basically make it harder for your horse to eat so they're not able to push the hay net up against the wall to pull the hay out so as a result they're forced to constantly bounce the, the hay net around to get the food out that they want. This can, again, be really good for alleviating boredom and slowing down eating while still not allowing them to, to gorge on anything. Another really good idea to alleviate boredom is to put some fibre cubes into a feed ball for the horse to push around their stable with their nose. It adds some variety to the diet. Um, it's just really important to make sure that if you do this, you include the weight of the fibre cubes into their daily ration and reduce their hay and chaff ration accordingly. What you don't want is a horse having that as an extra and then actually getting sneaky little extra calories that they don't realise, well, that we don't realise they're having. If your horse or pony has to be turned out onto a grassy paddock, then you should invest in a good sturdy grazing muzzle to limit the amount of grass that they eat. Bear in mind though, that even with a good grazing muzzle on, Horses are really able to eat a, a significant amount of grass in quite a short period of time. So if you find that your horse is not losing the weight, then you may need to think about reducing the grazing that they have access to.
um, or significantly reducing their hay ration. And finally, consider if your horse really does need a rug. There are many horses, particularly native breeds and heavier horses, that will cope extremely well over winter with very minimal rugging, particularly if they're not clipped out. So their coats are waterproof and they essentially have their own central heating systems, which means that they actually stay very, very warm from the inside out. By rugging a horse, we can slow down, well, we can basically encourage them to, to not lose weight over winter and therefore take away the natural cycle of weight, weight loss over winter, weight gain in summer. Obviously, some horses will always need to be rugged, particularly lighter horses, horses that are clipped out, that sort of thing. But it's definitely worth considering if there's any way of reducing the, the rugging that your horse has, particularly if you need them to lose weight. So in summary, using weight management tools every two weeks will allow excellent monitoring of your horse's weight loss by keeping a, an ongoing score of how much they're losing. Body condition scoring is a very useful tool, particularly for an owner to get familiar with, to assess whether your horse is the correct weight and also to work out where you would like them to be in the future. It's very important not to crash diet your horse. Horses need a steady supply of food to keep them healthy. So although cutting calories down can be very important, then it's also important to make sure they do have constant, well, continuous access to food throughout the day. Weight loss should be gradual and very carefully thought through and planned. Remember that most leisure horses get enough calories from grass alone. It may be necessary to reduce grass intake, but do remember to provide additional minerals and vitamins in the form of balances and salt licks so that they're getting everything that they need. A brisk walk or a steady trot will actually burn more fat than faster work such as canter. So Finding ways to build an active walk into your horse's day can be extremely beneficial, um, particularly if you've got hills near you and you can get them actively walking up hills. That's a really, really good way of increasing a horse's fitness. Um, and finally, work with your vet to put together a weight loss plan and a maintenance plan once your horse is at the correct weight. The, um, the advice in this presentation will help to, to lose weight, but once you're at the ideal weight, there are many other tips that we can give you to, to try and just maintain and mean that the horse doesn't continue to lose to a dangerous degree or put the weight straight back on again. I think it's really important to remember that your vets are always available to have these sorts of conversations with and just pick up the phone if you want to speak to any of us about it. 